Let's wrap up functional groups by talking about a very special type of molecule um, that actually contains two um, functional groups that we've talked about that I'm guessing you've heard of, and these are called amino acids. And from the name, I hope now you look at that and say, hmm, amino acids, I bet that means they contain an amine group, functional group, functional group we talked about, and they contain a carboxylic acid group. And you would be right. Here is the basic structure of an amino acid. We have a central carbon. Not surprised, the carbon is a central layer. Connected to one side of the carbon is a carboxylic acid group. And I hope everybody remembers what the carboxylic acid group looks like. I'll draw that in a different color. We've got the carbon-oxygen double bond, connected to oxygen, connected to hydrogen. So there's my carboxylic acid group. Okay. Connected to the other side in a different color is, guess what? The amine group. Okay. So there's our amine. Okay. So, and then in the other case, the other position, got a hydrogen in one location, and then the thing that makes every amino acid different from every other one is the nature of this other connection here, okay, which we'll call R, okay, where R can be any series of carbon groups. So every amino acid has the same basic structure. It has the amino group, and it also has the carboxylic acid, or the acid group, connected to this central carbon. And each amino acid, therefore, is only distinguished by this R group. Okay. There are 20 amino acids um, required by humans. Okay. Um, these are sometimes called the uh, naturally occurring amino acids, or whatever you want to call them. Make sure they only differ by this. Amino acids are the building blocks. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. And I bet you've all heard of protein. Protein is one of the three basic biological molecules. The other two are fats and carbohydrates. Proteins. Proteins are the major structural material in living systems. Skin, muscle, hair, etc. are made out of protein. Proteins are long chains of amino acids strung together. Um, in addition, proteins play another major role in biological systems. They are often substances that catalyze reactions. Remember, a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. In a biological system, okay, for some reason, we call those catalysts, which are very often proteins. We call those biological catalysts enzymes. I bet you've heard that word before, enzymes. So you have a whole variety of enzymes, for example, in your body that have specific purposes for catalyzing specific reactions in the, in, 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 in the human body. And those enzymes are crucial in terms of controlling how the various many, many, many chemical reactions that must happen in your body happen and don't happen. Okay, so a little preview of what you'll talk about when you get to biology. In any event, 
Let's just talk a little bit about how it is that amino acids connect with each other to make proteins. And that takes us back to um, what we talked about with amides. So let's have two amino acids. Let me get a little bit more space here. Let's draw two amino acids. Um, and so I'll sketch out two here real quickly. Again, amino acids have a central carbon. They have a carboxylic acid group on one side. They have an amine group on another side. They have a hydrogen here. And then it's what's connected here that distinguishes one amino acid from another. The simplest amino acid is called glycine. So if I put a hydrogen there, that is the amino acid called glycine, one of the 20 essential amino acids. All right. Now, we'll put the next simplest amino acid here. Again, going to draw it just like I drew it before. Okay. Nothing has changed. I've got my amine group. I've got my central carbon. I've got my carboxylic acid group. But now I'm going to put a carbon group here. And again, everybody knows there would be three hydrogens there. That is the next simplest amino acid, and that's called alanine. Alanine is also one of the 20 essential amino acids. Well, this might look familiar to what we did in the last um, little video. Notice if these two molecules get together and orient themselves such that the carboxylic acid group end of one molecule, so this is the acid end, gets close to the amine end. I hope everybody can see that we've got that special combination of H and OH potentially getting together to form our most stable of molecules, H2O. And if you can form H2O in a reaction, that generally happens because H2O, water, is such a stable molecule. Well, look what happens. H from the one, ha one, one of the amino acids, from the amine part of one amino acid, gets together with the OH from the other part, other amino acid molecule, and we can form an amide bond. Okay. And then I rewrite the structure now, connecting these two amino acids together. Get just a little bit more room here. So now what we end up with, bear with me, here I'm building my glycine part of this now molecule. But now, that glycine molecule has been connected to the alanine molecule by the amide bond. So now I, the result is I have been able to connect these two amino acids by our amide bond. Okay. Now, continue the process on, we might imagine that another amino acid comes up. Let's just suppose another glycine molecule comes up. I hope you can see what happens. Again, here's our glycine molecule. Our glycine amino acid. And again, wow, again, notice what we have. The acid end of one amino acid comes into contact with the amino end of another amino acid, and bingo, what can we do? Again, we can create a water molecule and connect a third amino acid to the chain by another amide bond. And I hope you can begin to see that we could have a similar reaction happening on this side. Okay. Another amino acid could be reacting this way, and suddenly our chain of amino acids grows both this way and this way. And, the only, and they're connected by a mid bond. So let me throw in that third one there. So again, H and connect these up here. There is our first amid link, linking our first two amino acids together. And now here comes our second link.
linking our third amino acid. Oops, hang on. Stuck there. Got to stick carbon in there. H and H. So now you see we have two amid links, and that amid link okay, has now allowed us to connect together three amino acids. Okay. Um, in proteins, we call those amid bonds. The amid bonds are sometimes called peptide bonds. And you'll learn more about those in biology. Okay? The only thing that differs between one amino acid between one protein and another is the order in which amino acids are, 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 are connected together. Now if you think about it, a little bit of math. At each point, when you're connecting an amino acid, you have 20 possibilities. So if we begin to think about proteins, we've got 20 possibilities, and 20 possibilities, and 20 possibilities for, and 20 possibilities. And so you can imagine proteins are made up of chains of, proteins are made up of chains of thousands of amino acids. And so now you can imagine that the diversity of proteins is absolutely huge. Because at every one of these little slots, at every one of these little places, you have 20 possibilities. The key is that the bond that links those amino acids together is the amid or peptide bond. Okay. So a little introduction to proteins. Mid bonds are important because they link together amino acids to make proteins. All right, enough of that.